Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is in continuation with the ischemic heart disease series. In the last few sessions, we were discussing about the important concepts of myocardial infarction, right? We talked about the etiopathogenesis and discussed in detail about the morphology of myocardial infarction and in, in this session let's learn another important concept uh, in the context of myocardial infarction that is ischemia reperfusion injury. Now what is this ischemia reperfusion injury? To begin with ischemia as we all know which means reduced blood supply to a particular organ. In this case whenever there is a blockage of the coronary artery there will be reduction in the blood supply to the myocardium, right? Reperfusion, which means basically restoration of the blood flow, which basically means there is recovery, there should be recovery of cells which have reversible injury, right? But the paradox is sometimes it can exacerbate the cell injury. Instead of recovery, the cell injury gets exacerbated resulting in death of these cells and this is referred to as ischemia reperfusion injury injury because of reperfusion in the ischemic tissue right so basically there is a reversal of the expected outcome the expected outcome is recovery of cells but what happens here is there is death of cells which would have otherwise recovered now, why should we understand the concept of ischemia reperfusion injury? The significance is that it contributes to tissue damage during myocardial and cerebral infarction. It is always following therapies to restoration of the blood flow. What are the various scenarios where ischemia reperfusion injury can occur? One, when the ischemia is sudden. There are two, better, there are two important scenarios. One is when the ischemia is sudden. And two, when the ischemia is anticipated. Now, what are the conditions where ischemia can be sudden? For example, myocardial infarction, we were discussing in detail, right? It could be stroke. It could be acute limb ischemia. For example, if there is any thrombosis or embolism of larger blood vessels. Or it can be gastrointestinal ischemia due to mesenteric artery blockage. Sometimes traumatic or crush injuries can also result in sudden onset of ischemia because of damage of these major blood vessels. The second scenario is when the ischemia is anticipated. You know, when all we can anticipate ischemia, the scenarios include during cardiac surgeries, during organ transplantations, during peripheral vascular surgeries or even elective surgeries. For example, in case of orthopedic surgeries where we use tourniquets. Right? So, these are the conditions where the ischemia is anticipated. So, these are the two major scenarios where ischemia reperfusion injury can occur. Now, the next important concept to understand is why or how does ischemia reperfusion injury occur. The most common reasons for that is oxidative stress. Second is intracellular calcium increase. Because of inflammation, and the last one is activation of the complement system. So, let's talk about each of these one by one, right? First, oxidative stress. We all know that reperfusion results in increased delivery of oxygen to the damaged endothelial cells, parenchymal cells, as well as the leukocytes. We now know that because of ischemia, the mitochondria is already damaged. Okay. So, this damaged mitochondria cannot handle this oxygen. Rather, there is incomplete reduction of oxygen, which means there is increase in the generation of free radicals. Right. So, what happens during perfusion? There is increased generation of free radicals. Also important point to note that during ischemia, the antioxidant mechanism is reduced. So, on one hand, there is increased generation of free radicals and on the other hand, there is decreased antioxidant mechanisms. And that is the reason why there is free radical induced cell. The mechanism of injury due to free radical increase is either because of protein 
oxidation because of lipid peroxidation or due to DNA damage. So basically, free radicals can cause all these things, all these three things, lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation and DNA damage leading on to this cell death. So that was about increased generation of free radicals, means of oxidative stress. The second important mechanism of reperfusion injury is increase in the intracellular calcium levels. During the process of ischemia, calcium overload begins. During the process of reperfusion, we have seen that there is increased generation of free radicals, right, which damages the cell membrane as well as the ion channels. So, when I talk about ion channels, these channels could be either sodium potassium pump channel or even the calcium channels. That means when the calcium channel is damaged, more and more calcium from the outside gets into the cell. So that means there is more intracellular calcium levels. Now, we should understand that it is the calcium inside the cell which results in more damage than the calcium outside of the cell. So what happens when the extracellular calcium gets inside? It results in increased cytosolic calcium levels and that leads to accumulation of calcium in the mitochondria, increase in the permeability transition of the mitochondria leading on to failure of oxidative phosphorylation, thereby decreasing the ATP. Right? That's one mechanism. But we are now interested in the role of calcium where it results in activation of intracellular enzymes, particularly the phospholipases and proteases, the endonucleases and the ATPases, which leads to membrane damage, nuclear damage as well as depletion of ATP. So, remember, during ischemia, because of damage of ionic channels due to free radicals, more and more calcium can come inside, resulting in more damage. So, reperfusion-induced damage. The third important concept of reperfusion injury is inflammation. So, during reperfusion, what happens? The cellular adhesion receptors are activated. For example, P selecting to the cell surface. That results in increase in the neutrophil binding to the intracellular adhesion molecule, ICAM1, leading on to migration of the neutrophils through the vascular wall into the tissue and these neutrophils release lots of cytotoxic mediators like tumor necrosis factor, interleukins and nitric oxide synthase. So basically it also leads to production of more and more free radicals and also leads to promotion of vasoconstriction. So that's the role of inflammation in the reperfusion causing injury. And the last but not the least is the complement system activation where during reperfusion, because of some unknown causes, there is the position of IgM antibodies in the ischemic tissues. And the complement, the circulating complement, binds to these IgM antibodies, leading on to the activation of those complements. And once the, complement is, once the complements are activated, that results in exacerbation of cell injury and also more and more inflammation. We talked about the role of oxidative stress, the role of increased intracellular calcium, the role of inflammation and the role of complement system activation in ischemia reperfusion injury. Now that we have understood the significance of ischemia reperfusion injury, we should also expect you know, that these could be the potential clinical manifestations or we can expect what can happen when there is reperfusion and thereby you can also plan strategies to prevent injury. Right. So, clinically, it depends upon the type of tissue affected, it depends upon the duration of ischemia and it depends upon the ability to reperfuse. For example, if the tissue is myocardium, which is what we were discussing in the last few sessions, right? if the tissue is myocardium, the myocardium goes into something called myocardial stunning, which means it can lead to sudden cardiac arrhythmias leading to sudden death. Renal ischemia the reperfusion injury can manifest as chronic kidney disease, can manifest as hypertension and the neutrophil can also invade into the renal tissue causing more and more damage. If there is gastrointestinal ischemia and you try to reperfuse, it can result in pain or even gastrointestinal bleed. But in today's context, we are looking at more of the myocardium which results in cardiac arrhythmias and sudden death. Now, the next question 
which can arise is can we prevent ischemia reperfusion injury okay now yes but that yes depends upon whether we are dealing with sudden onset ischemia or whether we are dealing with the anticipated ischemia right because there is something called preconditioning which we have to do where there is exposing of the tissue to short periods of ischemia before the prolonged ischemic event this is useful in the context of anticipated ischemia particularly when during cardiac surgeries or peripheral vascular disease limb surgeries or even orthopedic surgeries that's preconditioning post conditioning you know you you have a sudden onset of ischemia and then you have to reperfuse now what do you do you basically use the concept of intermittent interruptions of the blood flow early in the reperfusion phase because this reperfusion allows the cell to actually you know tolerate the amount of the free radicals generated if you perfuse continuously the amount of free radicals and all the damage mechanisms are so much that it is difficult for uh, you know the tissue to handle these oxidative stress as well as the increase intracellular calcium levels so that's why there will be intermittent interruptions of the blood flow and of course you can treat with antioxidants you can treat with anti inflammatory drugs and also calcium channel blockers we know why antioxidants work because there is increased generation of free radicals we know there is role of inflammation so anti inflammatory works and we know that there is increased levels of calcium inside the cell that's how the calcium channel blockers also help and lastly hypothermia can also be useful in prevention of ischemia or ischemic reperfusion injury so that completes today's session on ischemia reperfusion injury i hope you have understood the concepts of ischemia reperfusion injury remember it's a very very important concept irrespective of what organ you are studying of course we are looking at myocardial infarction in in this series but it could be cerebral infarction it could be you know the cardiac surgeries it could be gi infarction renal infarction whatever infarction the sudden reperfusion can result in injury instead of restoration of the normalcy right this is ischemia reperfusion injury thank you for watching if you have liked this video click on the like button if you have any queries to ask or if you want to comment on something please do comment in the comment section below and uh, if you like this video do consider subscribing and don't forget to share this with your friends so that they also can benefit out of this video thank you very much bye bye